Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome to today's video. We are here to talk about my best of beauty for 2023. I do have a basket of 23 goodies here. I thought that I would be cute and do 23 best of beauty for 2023. So why don't we go ahead and jump into the video. taking a look at my makeup items and picking what items to show you as my best of beauty. I wanted to keep them in this basket because I do not do my makeup at my vanity. This is in my bedroom. I do film in my bedroom, but I do have this white basket in my bathroom where I keep some of my makeup that I tend to use on a day-to-day -day when I'm getting ready in the morning. If you don't know, I'm an elementary school teacher. So a lot of times I just need like quick and easy, right? Like I'm not always doing a full beat or doing makeup to go out or anything like that. So I took a look at my tried and true, the makeup items that I kept in this basket that I was reaching for time and time again. And I wanted to pull out 23 of them, just, you know, 23 and 23, you know, be cute. But I also did make sure that I hit all of the makeup items that I was reaching for. You won't see eyeshadow palettes here. I am filming a video ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in 2023. It's either already up or it's coming. I don't know which, I don't have an order. But let's go ahead and dig into my most used makeup items for 2023 and I think I'm gonna apply them or apply them. No, I think I'm going to show them to you the way that I would apply them. So I'm going to start with primer and I do use two primers. So I felt like I had to talk about both of them, right? I use both of these primers every single day. They're the only primers that I used in 2023. I don't have any other primers and I've repurchased both of these. This one is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops. I love this. It's supposed to be like a niacinamide serum and you can use it as skincare or you can use it as a primer. I do have dry skin so what I would do is I would go in with like my skincare routine. I would put my SPF on, let it soak in, then follow it up with these drops which are super hydrating and also give like a nice glow to my face. But I do have fine lines and wrinkles. I don't really struggle with like texture a ton. But I do have some pores like around my nose that I kind of want to smooth out. So I do enjoy going in with my Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas and putting it kind of right here like on the sides of my nose and my forehead lines. That's been working for me for years. I do think when I finish this one up, it's like down to here. I have repurchased it before, but I think when I use it up, I'm going to try something different. Not because I don't love it, but that's like literally been my go-to primer for like a while. Like several years. So, you know, I want to switch it up. I want to try new things. But then this next product, I don't think that I would call it a best of beauty necessarily because it's a fave, but I'm putting it in the best of beauty because I've used it a ton this year. And this is the Gloric, Gloric, the Auric. I'm probably just going to keep all of my misspeaking in here. The Work Glow Lust in the shade Morganite. Now, I've talked about this on my channel before. I like it well enough. I think it's a good product. I use this more so as a primer. It can be used as a liquid illuminator, but I really like a bam in your face type of highlight. So I don't use this as that. I'll either mix it in with a foundation or I will put it on underneath foundation, which is what I've been doing. And this has been in my best of beauty because look how like look how much is in here and you take just the smallest amount so I've been trying to make myself use this product so after I go in with my primer I'll put a little bit on my fingers and just kind of put it on the high points of my face underneath foundation I feel like it's an extra step I feel like it's unnecessary I'm not telling you to like run out and purchase it I think it's a good product if you like liquid illuminators like you may like this but it's a lot you know what I mean it's a lot then I have two foundations. I have two foundations. The first was kind of in my project page <laughs> that I've abandoned a little bit, but I wanna use it up, y'all. I wanna use it up before the year is out. This is the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo in the shade Light One. I do not use the powder. I really, really like this foundation though. You can see it right here. I would just take my sponge. I would go right into the product and like put it all over my face. But now my sponge is having a hard time getting at the side. So you can see I've been digging a little bit. Like I'll take my nail and just kind of rub it on my face and then use my fingers to warm it up and go in with a sponge. I would love to use this up in 2023 if I can. 
but I love it. I love it. I would repurchase it. I'm not going to go out and repurchase it at this moment, but I totally would. The other foundation that is the one that I'm wearing today, and it's been a favorite like for so long. It's just like a classic go-to. It doesn't let me down. I know how it's going to perform for me. And this is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. I have the shade four, and I really like this one. It's going to give me a little bit more coverage than the Patrick Ta. The Patrick Ta, I feel like, doesn't set down completely. It's a little bit dewier. I do have a luminous look with the Armani, but I feel like the Armani sets down a little bit more and maybe looks like more of a satin whereas I have a little bit more of a dew with the Patrick Ta I enjoy that look I don't want a flat mat I have dry skin I'm trying to hydrate I'm trying to look vibrant I'm trying to like you know I want to glow I want to look healthy I want to look oily without being too oily you know what I mean so really really love this one also I have been using two concealers in my makeup routine and I use them both I use them both at the same time. It's these two here. So this one is the Pat McGrath. It's the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. This is in the shade L5. I had the shade L4 and used it up completely and thought I repurchased L4, but I repurchased L5. If I had just the shade L4, I feel like it would be fine on its own. I really enjoy this one because it's lightweight. I do have creasy under eyes. Y'all, I've had creasy under eyes forever, but now I'm like 36 or something like that. I can never remember my age. I think I'm 36. And I just have even more fine lines and wrinkles and crinkles. And again, dry skin, dryness, eczema underneath my eyes. I need the hydration. So I like this one because it gives me the coverage, but hydration and it sets down nicely. However, L5 is a little bit deep for me. So I've been going in with the Milani Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer in 115 Light Nude. I like this for the same reason. It gives me maybe even a little bit more coverage than the Pat McGrath but it doesn't settle into those fine lines. It's comfortable. It's a little less hydrating than the Pat McGrath, but still hydrating. And I would use this on my own, on its own. You can see I like really have been using it, but this shade is a little bit too light. So actually the combination of the two is really good. The powder, I've been using a couple powders this year, but the one that I keep going back to was actually a Christmas gift for me last year, and it is this one right here by Givenchy. It's the Prism Libre. This is in the shade three, and my best friend Smegs got this for me last year for Christmas. I've been using it. I do really like this one. I just kind of dump it into the cap and mix all four of these shades together, and I'll go in either with my damp sponge or like a little powder puff and put it just right underneath my eyes, but I also like to to bring it down into my smile lines and sometimes underneath my bronzer not necessarily because I'm trying to chisel out but I feel like this powder gives me a little bit of like a smoothing effect it's heavier than the hourglass translucent veil which I absolutely love but it's not quite as heavy as like the Laura Mercier translucent powder so I like this one for my dry skin because it kind of sets down and gives a smoothing effect so that is definitely one that I have enjoyed this year I almost forgot almost forgot one of the best. I actually go in with this before I go in with foundation. This is from Sigma. This is the Sigma Color Correcting Duo in Light to Medium. Again, pan. We have pan in both of these. So I will actually prime my face and then I'll go in with this. I just use my finger and dip my finger into both sides and kind of press it right here on my under eyes because I do struggle with dark circles. It's hereditary. I have them no matter how much sleep I get, no matter how rested I am. I still have dark circles and so I really like this because I feel like it does a great job at like canceling out those dark circles and putting it underneath the foundation. I don't feel like it's like caking or you know, it's not too much to have this and then the foundation and then the concealer. So it does a great job of like color correcting and neutralizing it so that I can go in with my foundation. For brow products, there are three products that I have been using and loving this year. There are more, but three that I wanted to put in my best of beauty. And it is these three right here. First of all, I've had this one forever. It's the Anastasia Brow Definer in the shade Caramel. No, I've like literally had this one forever. Like legit had this one tiny little piece forever. Okay, it's lasted me a long time, right? It's probably time to buy a new one, but I don't buy a new one because it's lasted me so long, but I like it and I keep it in my collection because my eyebrows are so thin and fine that what I do is I'll go in with a brow pencil first, one that's a little bit more thin, like the ABH Brow Wiz, or 
my other favorite in here, the Patrick Ta, and I will outline my brow, but then I like to take this and kind of fill it in, and Caramel is like a nice deep shade, and it kind of fills in those sparse areas quickly. I have really been loving the Patrick Ta Major Brow Defining Pencil in the shade Blonde. You do have a very, very fine point, but it's almost, it's not triangular, it's almost a little bit flat, and it's very pigmented. Even though it's blonde, it's lighter than the shade Caramel, but I don't have to apply a lot of pressure. I can just very lightly go in and get brow-like strokes, which I really do enjoy. It also has a spoolie on the other end, and the thing that I like about these caps is could you hear that? You, When you press it down, you can hear a snap. And the caps are two different sizes, which I know is like first world problems, right? But I really enjoy that because these ones from ABH, first of all, this is so old that they just pop off all the time. And I mean, they're the same size, so I can put the cap on either side. I've really been enjoying setting my brows with the Patrick Ta Lamination Gel. This is like hairspray for your brows. If you're not trying to hairspray your brows down, you probably wouldn't like this. This is kind of goopy. It is kind of thick feeling, but I enjoy it because I feel like it literally hairsprays my brows in place and that's what I'm looking for. So a little bit goes a long way. I'll just kind of brush it into my brows and then go in with my spoolie and kind of brush it out also and really work it in there. My brows stay all day. Like they literally are cemented in place. It's wonderful. So that has been a great product for me. Then we can move into, I guess, eyeshadow primer. It's really the only, I, I only have a few eye products in here because I'm going to do my whole like palette video, but the eyeshadow primer that I've been reaching for this year is the Sigma Eyeshadow Base Primer in the shade Ignite. I love this one because it's creamy. It's in a stick form, so it's creamy. I can just brush it on the lid, but then I can blend it out with my finger, but it also has pigment to it, so it cancels out any lines or veining. I do struggle with eczema on my eyelids sometimes. It's weird, I know, but it's a thing, and so like the MAC Paint Pots, I used to love them, but they can be a little bit too thick, especially if I'm having some eczema. This has not made my eczema flare up again. A little bit goes a long way. I like that it's easy to travel with. I also appreciate that it's not like in a jar form like the paint pots. Even though I'm using my finger to blend it out, I don't have to like dig into a jar to get some, right? Or try and get my finger in when I have these, these claws on. I can just draw it on and blend it out. So again, little details that I appreciate. We'll also just stick with the two mascaras that I've been using this year since we are on eyes. These have been my two tried and true favorites for so long for so long. It is the Lancome Moisture Big and the Benefit Roller Lash. I like to use these together because the Lancome is for volume. It can, it can give you a spider lash. It can get a little bit too clumpy. I'm not going to lie about that, but I like volume. So I'll go in and do two coats of this one, but then because it gets kind of like a little clumpy and I just want to like brush it out and extend the length of my lashes a little bit, and then I'll go in with my roller lash. This one's more for lengthening, so I will get a little bit of product and then just kind of comb through my lashes and brush them upward. And that combination has just been working for me for years. So I continue to use it, I continue to love it. I've tried a few other mascaras this year, but like, I keep going back to those ones. We have a few more products. They are face products. One of the bronzers that I have been using a ton, I've really been trying to rotate through my bronzers, but one that I kind of fall back to, or if I know that I need it to look good, I have an event coming up, or I just, if I'm just like trying to move quickly and I wanna put a bronzer on my face, I've really been reaching for this one from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the airbrush bronzer, the matte one in the shade two medium. I don't know if you can tell, there's like a tiny little dip here. I'm pretty light handed with bronzer. I've seen people hit pan in this and I'm like, I wanna hit pan, right? Like I wanna be using up my makeup, I wanna hit pan. And I, can you see the dip? Can you? Can you? My autofocus is not very good, so I can't like, I, if I do that, you're not gonna be able to see it, right? I don't know if, it, nobody's ever asked me that. I don't know if you guys are wondering, but my autofocus is very loud, so I just keep it zoomed in on me, but that's why I don't do the whole like, you know, YouTuber where you, you kind of push it up in front of the camera because it's not gonna autofocus. But anyway, love this bronzer. I've been using it a ton. I do have a couple blushes. <laughs> 
And the reason why I'm mentioning all three of these blushes is because these were my most used, but I feel like they were most used at different times of the year. So in the beginning of 2023, I had just gotten the new Gucci bronzer in the shade 05 Rosy Beige, and I was using this a ton. I love it. It's a beautiful mauve shade. It has more of a satin finish. It's very pigmented. It looks beautiful on my fair to light skin, and I was just reaching for it a ton. It's expensive. I got it during the Sephora VIB sale last year, but I loved it, right? So then I put that one away, and I also had another one that I think was maybe a holiday release last year, and I went and moved over to Pat McGrath, which is probably one of like my favorite blush formula formulas, if not my actual favorite blush formula, and I have this shade in Nude Venus too. I love the Pat McGrath blushes. So I was reaching for Nude Venus too a lot just because it was my newest Pat McGrath blush. I have tons of her blushes. These ones are also tried and trues for me. Like If I just need something that's going to give me a flush on my cheeks and it's going to look good I reach for the Pat McGrath but then towards the end of the, the year I was like listen I need to pull out an Old Faithful I need to dig back into the archives over here this shelf I need to see what I have loved but haven't loved lately and so that is how we got back to the Buxom this is the Wanderlust primer infused blush in the shade Seychelles that's what I'm wearing right now I feel like it looks like it's not much in the pan, but it's beautiful. It gives me a sheen. There are no chunks of glitter, no sparkles, but it's not flat matte. It gives me a sheen. It makes my skin look glowy, and it's just like a beautiful neutral shade that goes with anything, like literally anything. So these were definitely my most used blushes of the year in 2023. And I have a couple highlights to share. I'm going to stick with the one that has just been a trusty Old Faithful for so long. And it's my Natasha Denona Super Glow. This is in the shade Fair. Again, I don't know if you can tell. I'm trying to move it so that you can see. I have a big dip in here. This is the one that I'm wearing today. I just go back to it time and time again because it really does give me like that glow from within. I don't like sparkle. I don't like glitter. I don't want chunks. But I want to have a beaming highlight. I want to look like a vampire in twilight where I am just glowing but glowing from within. This really does it for me. I love that shade but there was a new favorite that snuck in here. The Natasha Denona has been my favorite for a really long time. There was a new favorite that snuck in here and it's from Sigma Beauty and this is the Sigma highlighter in the shade twilight and you can just see how much I've been using it. I love this one because it's not pink but it's not quite rose gold, but it's not champagne. It's almost like a almost like a cool toned rose gold, if that's a thing. That's kind of what this looks like. Again, it gives me a very like beaming highlight, but it blends into the skin. It doesn't give me a harsh line. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I do have a code with Sigma. It's Kbella if you ever want to save. And I do have affiliate links if you're interested in shopping through my links. Thank you so much. You don't have to. But if you do, I do get a little bit of commission from Sigma. That's not why I'm mentioning this. You can see I do really love it, right? I do really love it. I've reached for it a ton. We're going to end with lips. We're going to end with lips. This combination that I am wearing right now has been my go-to. It stays in my purse. It goes to school with me. It's quick. It's easy. I don't have to think about it, and I love the way that it looks. So... First up, it is my Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Liner. This little guy is getting down there. I really want to be able to use it up. I don't know if I'll be able to use it up in 2024. I use it with everything. Like literally this lip liner I can use with absolutely everything. But I really, really love it with the lipstick that I'm wearing right now. And it's from MAC, y'all. It is from MAC. This is the shade Blankety. Blankety is just kind of like the perfect everyday go-to pinky nude. It's a pinky nude. It's not a brown nude, but it's not a hot pink. It's a pinky nude. It's a favorite. It's comfortable. It's an amplified cream, so you have a lot of pigment with it, but it doesn't give me a glossy finish. It's easy to apply without lip liner, but I really like mixing these two together because I will take the Iconic Nude, which I feel like is a little bit of a deeper uh, lip color shade. Does that make sense? Lip color shade. What am I saying? It's a little bit of a deeper shade. So I'll outline my lips and fill it in a little bit and then kind of put this on top and it's easy. It's quick. It's easy. I don't have to think about it. It's been going with me in my purse to school, on vacation, everywhere.
Okay, friends, but that's it. I feel like it was kind of fast and furious, but my best of beauty for 2023. I just thought it would be fun to pick 23 products. Like, there are other products that I've loved this year, but I thought that it would be fun to kind of pull out the ones that were like my go to's that I fell back on that stayed in my bathroom. So, I would love to know your thoughts down below. I would love to know what your favorite makeup products were for 2023. I want to know, like, were you guys falling back into old favorites? Like, my super glow from Natasha Denona and the Buxom Seychelles and the Giorgio Armani like these have been favorites they've been in my best of beauty they've been around for a while or have you been reaching for newer products like this Sigma highlighter is a newer product for me this Gucci blush was a newer product for me the Prism Libre was a newer product for me so I feel like this year was a really good mixture of me trying to focus on new products that I purchased but also remembering the old products that I had in my collection and I want to keep that same mindset going into 2024 like I really want to curate my collection to have products that I'm using and that I'm loving because I think it's great when people do best of beauties and they only mention products that they tried in 2023, but I want to remind myself of just like what's worked for me, whether it was new or whether it was old. So thanks for coming to my TED Talk. That's it. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you guys are subscribed before you go. That way I can see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.